Hey there, what's up? This is Seth from retipster.com and in this video I'm going to give you a thorough overview of how to pull a direct mail list from a service called Agent Pro 24-7. So I've actually made lots of videos about Agent Pro 24-7 and I've used this software for well over a decade now and it's just a really solid option if you're trying to pull a direct mail list. Now this certainly is not the only place to do it. There's lots of ways to go about this. There's another service called Datatree that I've used a lot. I've got a whole separate video on how to use that one. There's also RealQuest Pro, there's List Source, there's Melissa Data, and there's many more beyond that. So don't feel like this is the only way you can do it, but I will tell you from experience that this service can certainly work if you pick a good county, you verify that the data is current, and you know how to really filter that data well. And I should also say that uh, I have no no particular allegiance to this product other than the fact that I've just used it so many times and I've seen good results come out of it. Nobody from Agent Pro 24-7 is paying me for this video. Nobody has approved or disapproved of what you're about to hear. I'm just a guy who has put a lot of time and energy into this topic and uh, figuring out the right solution. So hopefully you'll get something in the next few minutes as I show you how this works. So if you already have an account with Agent Pro 24-7, you just have to go ahead and log in. So I'm gonna do that here. And as soon as you log in, you're gonna see a, a screen that looks something like this. And it's worth noting that Agent Pro 24-7 isn't just for pulling lists. It's also a great tool for doing property research on individual properties that you may be looking to purchase. And again, I have a whole separate video on how to do that within Agent Pro. So so I'll go ahead and link to that beneath this video if you want to check it out. But if you want to dive into pulling lists, first thing I want to do is go up here where it says farm and click on this button. And before you go anywhere, it's helpful to verify that whatever county and state you're pulling your list from, that information is actually current and up to date in Agent Pro 24-7's system. So to do that, we go up here to tools and we click on geographic coverage and it's going to bring up this little map of the U.S. And all you got to do is click on the state and then find the county that you're trying to pull a list from. So for example, if I click on Florida here, we can see a list of every single county that is in Agent Pro 24-7's database. We can also see the date at which this data was last updated. The reason this is important is because every county around the U.S., and there's well over 3,000 of them, uses its own individual database, and they're not all good at keeping their data up to date and allowing Agent Pro to get access to their data on a regular basis. So just looking at Florida here, I'm recording this video at the end of March 2020. And you can just see right here, most of these counties are in pretty good shape. It looks like almost all of them have been updated within the past 30 days. And that's usually the standard that I try to look for is having the data within the last 30 days. So if it's a week old, we're good. If it's three weeks old, we're okay. But if it's like 90 days old or six months old or years old, that's when I start to say, oh, I don't know if I want to use this particular county because this information is pretty old. And the older it gets, the less accurate it gets. Just to show you an example of what I'm talking about, uh, if we go over here to just say North Dakota or one of these states that has a lot more rural counties with a much smaller population and smaller tax base to keep their records updated and current, you can see a lot of these counties aren't just old, like they don't even exist. Like Agent Pro doesn't even have access to their data. And if you go over here to Michigan, you can see that a lot of them are pretty good, but there's also a lot of them that are, are also really old. Like this particular county here was last updated in 2013. I mean, that's like many, many years ago. I totally wouldn't even think about working with a list that's that old. And uh, while that's kind of unfortunate, the good news is Agent Pro does actually allow you to see this information. It's not like some other data services where you just have to blindly trust that it's correct and not actually know how old the data is that you're working with. And not every data service does this. So I guess that's one one check in Agent Pro 24-7's favor. So uh, in this particular example, I'm actually going to be pulling a list from Sonoma County, California. And California actually has like probably the best data of any state in the country. For whatever reason, California tends to be very reliable when it comes to these kinds of data services. And this isn't just an Agent Pro. This is the case in pretty much any data service out there. So if I uh, find Sonoma County on here, which is right down here, Looks like this was last updated on March 10, which is within the past 20 days of when I'm recording this. So we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. And then I'm gonna go up here and select California and then type in the county that I'm trying to pull this list from. So 
go ahead and do that. We can select it. And the first thing you see over here on the left is some of the options you can start using to filter your lists. And the tough thing about making a video like this is that there is no one size fits all recipe for how you should be filtering your lists. It totally depends on what types of properties you're looking for, how much you're willing to pay, the different potential uses of the property. Lots of different factors can affect the way that you should be filtering your list. So what I'm going to do in this example is just show you how I would pull my list if I was trying to contact owners of vacant residential land in Sonoma County. These are the things that I would do to try to filter this list. And even this probably isn't perfect, but it will get me pretty close to where I'm trying to be. So because I'm searching specifically for vacant land and I'm searching on a county by county basis, I'm not trying to drill down to a specific city or a range of zip codes or addresses or anything like that. I don't need to mess with anything here in this first section. If I was looking for like single family houses in a certain section of town or something like that, then this would be very, very useful. But because I'm not doing any of that, I'm just looking at residential vacant land anywhere in Sonoma County, California. I don't need to spend a whole lot of time here. But uh, when it comes to this next section, this is where it does start to matter a lot what I put in here. So if I'm looking specifically for vacant land, there's a few different ways I can tell Agent Pro that those are the types of properties I want on my list. This first one up here under property type is probably the most general way to do it. And I can just open this up and uh, click the checkbox by any type of uh, property that I want to include on this list. And uh, obviously a residential vacant land fits the profile pretty well. If I wanted to, I could probably just stop there. However, something that uh, I've usually done in the past is I don't just stop there. I'll also include stuff like recreational and agricultural and rural. Uh, commercial vacant land, I could do that, but usually with commercial properties, it starts to open up the door to a lot of additional wrinkles like environmental laws and much more specific uses for each property, which ultimately makes it a lot harder to find buyers on the back end. So most of the time, I don't mess around with commercial vacant land. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just telling you I'm going to avoid that one for now. And if I wanted to, I could also click SFR, which stands for single family residential. And you might wonder why would I select that if I'm looking for vacant land? And there is a reason for that, and I'll explain it in just a minute. So once I've got all of my desired property types selected, I could just click OK and then move on to the next section. However, since we're here, I'll show you one other way you can do this. Say if you wanted to get a lot more specific about the property types, like not just vacant land, but vacant land with certain uses. Uh, what you could do here is go and just clear this out. Just hit the reset button and then go back to use code. And this is kind of a similar menu, but you'll see there's a lot more options to choose from. For example, if I was looking for vacant land again, I could just scroll through here and select any type of property that looks like vacant land and a particular use that I'm okay with. For example, wasteland, marsh, swamp. It's usually not what I'm looking for, so I'm going to leave that blank. Like vineyard, for example, I know that's a big thing here in Sonoma County. If I had millions and millions of dollars to buy a vineyard, I could check that, but again, that's not my situation, so I'm not going to do it. Vacant land general, I will select that one. Timberland, forest and trees, I'll select that one too. Rural agriculture, vacant land. I'll check that one. Residential vacant land. I'll check that one too. I'm not going to go through this whole list, but my point is if you want to drill down a lot more specifically to a lot of the different property uses, you can do that here if you want. And furthermore, if you wanted to sort by the county use code, which is even more specific than the previous option, you could do that as well. I frankly almost never use this option. Maybe it's just because it's, it's so huge and overwhelming that it's just easier for me to go with some of the previous options. But uh, just so you know, that that is there if you want to explore that. So again, just to keep this simple, I'm going to select agricultural and rural, recreational, residential vacant land, and single family residential. And as you can see, when we look at like building size, number of beds and baths and stories and the year built and all that stuff, because we're looking specifically for vacant land and nothing else, none of these things apply. So we can just leave them all blank. Uh, one thing that might apply, depending on what you're looking for, is this lot size field. So something I've come across a lot uh, in my career as a land investor are properties that are kind of pointless because they're so small. I've seen properties that are like, 
0.05 acres, like just these tiny little slivers of land that you can't even do anything with. One way to steer away from those types of properties is to specify a lot size. For example, I could put uh, all the properties that are between one and five acres in size. And then down here where it says lot size unit, we're gonna select acres. That will basically exclude any vacant lot that is larger than five acres or smaller than one acre. And this is just an example. Like if you wanted to say one to 10 acres or one to 20 acres, it's up to you, however you wanna do it. However, I will say that, uh, you know, this is California and this is like wine country. I mean, we're talking about some of the most expensive farmland in the world. So just be aware of that. In this case, I think one to five acres is probably a good range for what I'm willing to stick with. Now, if we were looking for houses, we could specify like whether or not the property has a pool, a lot of other specifics up here, but uh, again, doesn't apply here. When it says owner occupancy, we can either select occupied properties, which again, for vacant land, if it really is vacant land, this should by default have no owner occupied properties. But if we wanted to just be absolutely sure, we could select absentee owner. And this basically just means that the owner's mailing address is a different address than the address of the property itself. And you might've seen right here, one other thing you can do is include only the out of state owners. And this is something that a lot of real estate investors like to do because usually the further away a person lives from their property, the less interest they're gonna have in maintaining it and keeping it. It's kind of like this out of sight, out of mind thing. And this definitely is not the only way to do it, but like if you wanted to spend the least amount possible on direct mail, this is one filtering option that could help you achieve that simply because you're only gonna be sending mail to people who live a long ways away from the property. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm just gonna select absentee and keep going down the list. And then down here where it says owner type, so if you wanted to, you could tell Agent Pro to either include properties that are owned by trusts and corporations and LLCs, or you could tell it to exclude properties that are owned by those types of entities. And the reason that might be helpful is, say if you know you're not gonna be buying properties from like a bank or a big corporation or anything with a complicated ownership structure and you just wanna get those off your list from the get-go, that's when this kind of thing might be useful. So you could select all and don't don't include them, but exclude them from your list. And I do know just from the land investing perspective, if you are planning to like do a self-closing, this kind of thing can make a lot of sense because when you're buying property from a trust or an LLC, it's significantly more complicated to verify and prove the ownership of those entities so that the correct person can sign the document and transfer the deed to you. And if you just want to steer clear of those properties altogether, this would be a great option for you. On the other hand, if you're planning to run your deals through a title company or a closing attorney, no matter what, then frankly, I don't see any reason to exclude these because that closing agent is gonna handle all of those complexities for you. So it just kind of depends on what your intent is. If you know you don't wanna deal with trusts or corporations for any reason, go ahead and select that if you want to, it's up to you. So I'm gonna leave this blank and then we can move down here to this next section here. And uh, right up here at the top, you will see this option to select whether or not you want a distressed property, either either from the tax angle or the foreclosure angle. And uh, I can tell you from firsthand experience, a delinquent tax list is an extremely powerful type of list because all the property owners that have delinquent taxes, they do all have a big issue in common. And that is if they don't pay their taxes off soon, they're gonna lose their property entirely, which is actually a very similar situation to foreclosure, but the foreclosure situation is usually due to a outstanding loan on the property. So these kinds of lists can be very powerful. However, unfortunately, I've found in the past, this particular filtering metric of all the other ones here tends to be not that accurate, at least not in the states that I've tried to pull it from. That doesn't mean it's never accurate, but from my own firsthand experience, I've found it to not be like the most trustworthy thing per se. So I usually just ignore this one altogether, even though it's there. I don't count on it working. I just kind of bypass this altogether. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I do think for the most part, if you do really want to work with a delinquent tax list, I found it's usually best to get that information directly from the county, simply because the information is 100% current because it's literally coming from the county system. Like it can't be any more current or accurate than what the county has to say. And I'll tell you, it's a huge, huge pain in most cases to get that list from the county. It's much more complicated 
complicated and annoying than working with Agent Pro. But even so, it's still kind of worth the effort just because that list is gold if you can get it and deal with all the headaches that come with it. Moving on, if we keep going down here. So if you remember earlier back up here when I selected uh, SFR here, even though I'm not looking for houses, one reason for that is because down here, I can specify that I only want properties that do not have any improvements on them. No buildings, nothing. And I can do that by typing in 0-0. So normally there would be some kind of a range here, but I'm just saying no no improvements whatsoever. And what that effectively does is it says, I'm okay with any property that's zoned for a single family residential house. However, I only want the ones that don't actually have a house on them yet, if that makes sense. And then down here where it says market value, this is based on the county's assessed value, which is definitely not the ultimate authority on what properties are actually worth. However, there is usually some basis for how this number comes into play. Usually it has something to do with a previous sale price or other similar sale prices in the area. So while the county is definitely not an appraiser and they don't know with any accuracy what a property is worth, it's something. And using that, you can specify what market value range you're willing to include on your list. In my example here, I'm going to include all the properties that are worth anywhere from 5,000 bucks to $100,000. And again, it's up to you what value range you want to include. You'll probably want to keep in mind, how much cash do I have available to actually buy properties? Do I have the resources to go after properties that are worth 5 million bucks? If not, then I probably shouldn't include those on this list. Just kind of do your own deductive reasoning and figure out what market values you're willing to accept. And then moving on down here where it says demographics, I actually don't ever mess with any of these things. So I'm not going to mess with that. And then down here, you can specify foreclosure data and mortgage and information. Say if you wanted to target properties that have a lower mortgage balance or no mortgage at all, you could potentially do that. And I can actually think of several instances where that might be helpful. Say if you were trying to target high equity properties or people that do not have a mortgage at all so that you could potentially make a lower offer, that could be very, very helpful information to have. Uh, but again, uh, with vacant land, because of the property type, it is pretty rare that you'll find any of these owners with mortgages on their property. So for my purposes, it's not really that important. And uh, once you've got all of your filtering criteria plugged in here, you can also see a little summary of it right over here. But once you think you know what you want, go over here and click on count only. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you how many records will show up in your list based on the filtering criteria you've chosen. And uh, it's actually not uncommon to see this where it shows you there's nobody on this list. And when you see that, it usually means that the filtering criteria you selected is too restrictive or you're asking the database to provide you with something that it can't do. Maybe because there's conflicting information there or it just frankly doesn't have what you're looking for. So one way to resolve this is to go back to your filtering metrics and just start playing with them a little bit. Start changing things around a little bit and opening up the specifications a little bit more, making the box a little bit bigger until you start to see a number show up here. So just right off the bat, one thing I could do is like, let's just get rid of this market value option for a second and count it again and see what happens. Okay, so uh, now we've got over a thousand people on this list just by changing that one thing. So maybe one way to do this is to make the range a little bit bigger. We'll say maybe a thousand to two hundred thousand. And again, only do this if obviously you can go after properties that fit within that range. But uh, let's count this again. And that brings us back to zero. So one thing this could mean is that perhaps this market value is either somehow misfiring or the data just isn't available in Agent Pro 24-7's database. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this all together and not rely on that at all. So something to keep in mind here as you're seeing how many results are showing up based Based on the filtering criteria you've chosen is, well, how many mailers do you actually want to send out? Are you looking to send out like 500 or 1,000 or 10,000? That's one of the things that should help tell you whether or not your list is big enough and if you're on the right track with how you've got this filtering criteria set up. And obviously, don't open it up more than you really want to. I mean, if you're not looking for properties that are, you know, 50 acres in size, then don't put that here. Say if we were only looking to send out like 300 mailers, one way to tighten up this filtering criteria would be to go over here to property using characteristics and say well, let's do only the out-of-state owners and see how that changes things and uh, as we can see here our list just got significantly smaller so say if we wanted to bring that up a little bit well let's do properties between 1 and 10 acres and see how many of that gets us 
and now we're up to 114 say if we wanted to bring it up to uh, 1 to 20 acres just for example here 134 so that's not really getting me to where I want to go and I'm frankly not looking for properties that big anyway so let's bring that back down to uh, 1 to 5 acres and then we could switch this back to absentee owners and maybe play around with the property types here we could add other property types here if we wanted to and ultimately what I hope you're seeing through all these different gyrations I'm talking about is that there are basically an infinite number number of different ways you can filter your list. But once you've got your list narrowed down in the way that you want, and that final number looks acceptable, the next step here is to click on View Records. And the nice thing about uh, Agent Pro 24-7, and really a number of other data services do the same thing, is they will actually show you the addresses and the owner names before you download and export your list. So the nice thing is that you can scroll through here, and if you see certain duplicates where you're like, well, I don't want to send it two letters to this uh, Fulton Road Preserve. I just want to send them one. So you can just deselect any duplicates manually if you want. And I know some other services like DataTree, for example, have an option where you can just say, hey, exclude all duplicates. So you don't have to manually do this one by one by one. And that's actually something I love about DataTree. But if you're willing to go through these one by one and manually deselect the duplicates, you do have the option of doing that before you download the list. And the reason this is helpful is because you do have to pay on a per lead basis when you download these lists. So one way or another, it's gonna cost you for every lead you download so you don't want to just like be flippant and waste this stuff so if you see duplicates that you know you don't want to send a bunch of identical letters to the same person then go ahead and delete them before you finalize and export your list so assuming you go through all this stuff and you find which ones you don't want and you deselect them before you uh, export the list all you have to do is click select records here and then just name your list however you want to remember it so we'll say okay here and I thought this was going to be a problem. So I'm actually going to get to this in a second, but for the particular subscription that I have, I can't exceed a thousand leads per month. So what I'm going to have to do here is go back to this list and deselect enough of these properties until this number gets to a thousand or fewer. Or what I could do if I want to save time just for the sake of this recording is select this little bubble here and just say from one to a thousand and just do it that way. And let's see if this works. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and click this export button. You can see a list of all the information that will be included on this list when you download it. And anything that's not checked is obviously not going to be included. So if for some reason you do want information like, for example, total market value might actually be kind of useful, assuming it's actually there and knowing whether or not it's a corporation or trust, that kind of stuff can be helpful. So you could select this stuff as well if you want it, or you can go up here and just select all fields. So like if they have the information, just include it. And then I can work on removing that later if I want to. And once you've got that all squared away, you just click okay, and then download the list. You're gonna get it as a CSV file, which you can open up with Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets or Numbers, if that happens to be your spreadsheet software of choice. And right off the bat, you can see that there's a ton of information here. It's definitely a lot cleaner than a list you would see from like a county, say if the county was gonna send you a delinquent tax list, but still like there's a lot of data here and we do not need all this data. The next step is to figure out how to sort this and get it in the right columns and all the information in the right place. So you you can move on to the next step, which is uploading this list to a direct mail service so that you can send out mail to all these people. So in the next video, we're going to talk about that process and how that works. What kind of stuff on this list can you just go ahead and delete? What kinds of things do you have to rearrange and move from one place to another? And how do you use that information to then upload to your direct mail service of choice? And there's a lot of those out there as well. So we'll cover all those things in the following videos. So that's it for using Agent Pro 24-7. In order to subscribe and sign up from the homepage, you just click right here on subscribe now. And there's something you should know about. Uh, this is obviously the standard pricing at the time of this recording anyway. And by the way, Agent Pro has changed up their pricing a bit. It used to be significantly cheaper. But even so, there's a partner ID code here you should know about. And I do not make money from this. Let me be very clear about that. This is not an affiliate thing, nothing like that. It's just a code I happen to know about and I've known about it for years. Years, and uh, as far as I know, it's still active. Uh, all you'd have to do is type in CFGRSH right here and uh, watch these prices here after I click update. 
because they all go down by 10%. So it's not huge, but hey, it's something, right? And this applies to the life of your subscription. So this isn't like just a savings on the first month. This is a savings like forever. So it's pretty cool. The subscription that I have is actually not even available here anymore. It's called the bronze subscription. I don't know why, but for some reason they got rid of the bronze and silver. Now you can only do the gold or the platinum. In terms of which one is the right one for you, kind of depends on how much mail you're planning to send out because you have to pay this each month regardless of whether you use this or not. I think a thousand per month is a pretty decent number, but I know some people send out a lot more mail than that, so they may want to subscribe to the 2000 one. However, one thing uh, that I would probably do if I could start over today, and if I was in your shoes, and if I was not a current subscriber, is I would choose these pay-as-you-go dollars because you basically only pay for what you use. And you have to pay a minimum of 30 bucks to start with, but still, like, that's way less than most of these other options, and you're not, like, committing to paying this amount every single month. It's only for the ones you actually end up pulling. Just for this example, I'm going to select this one. You can click next and then uh, next again. And this just lays out how much you're going to have to pay today and then how much it's going to cost on the first of the next month when it gets started. Now, right here, this is something where a lot of people tend to get hung up. And I understand why, because it's a little bit confusing. So you would go ahead and put in all your normal information here. And then right here where it says real estate license number, I've had a lot of people come to me and say, Seth, I can't do this. I'm not a licensed real estate agent, so I, I'm stuck. You can get through this really easily, actually. All you have to do is type something into this field. Usually what I would do is just type in the word investor, just like that. So it's pretty simple. And obviously fill in the rest of this information, click next, follow the prompts, and you can get started and start using it. Again, Agent Pro 24-7 is not perfect. It's got plenty of little quirks that you have to just tolerate and deal with. However, if you're willing to deal with those quirks and every data service has them, Agent Pro is definitely not alone in that. It can be a very, very useful tool, not only for pulling lists, but also for doing property research. If you do decide to use it, I hope you find it really helpful. And always keep in mind, there's other options out there too. Again, Data Tree is another really solid one that I've been using for years now, and I've also been really happy with that one too. And I'll be sure to link to a separate video tutorial tutorial on that one in case you want to see what this whole process looks like on that platform. Datatree actually has some nice features that Agent Pro does not have, but in some ways it can also make the process a little bit more confusing because it gives you so many different options to work with. So it kind of has its pros and cons. But again, if you want to check out how Datatree works before you make a decision one way or another, I'll have a link to that video. And also keep in mind, I also have a discount you can use for Datatree as well if you decide to use that one instead of this one. So either way you go, I can get you discounted access. So thanks again for watching. Hope you found this helpful and I'll talk to you in the next video.